really what we wanted to do here was what are the, what, what are the basics around building a stress library? What's, what information should you manage? Okay. Um, and, um, you know, how do you integrate that into an overall process of stress testing first? And then secondly, um, scenario generation methodologies, right? Um, you know, what are, uh, you know, ways of doing sensitivity analysis based stress tests? What are some advantages and disadvantages of doing that? Um, what are some advantages and disadvantages of historical simulations? Uh, how do you come up with intelligent historical scenarios, say, uh, scenarios of, uh, you know, periods in history where maybe there wasn't a complete uh, data or there are a lot of new time series now. How do we adapt historical scenarios to make sense in the current context? Um, and then finally, uh, how do we go about uh, hypothetical scenarios, thinking about um, really looking into the future and potentially uh, doing scenarios that are either archetypal hypothetical scenarios, i.e., deflationary bust, deflationary boom, inflationary bust, inflationary boom, uh, or um, you know, looking, uh, looking forward at potentially scenarios that might have never happened before, um, such as, for example, things like peak oil scenarios, uh, global warming types of scenarios, and things like that. Okay? So that's the preview of the section here. Um, the, the cycle, the scenario design and monitoring cycle um, is essentially an ongoing cycle where we look at um, new scenario paths taking into account uh, external systemic amplifiers and internal management response, right? So the key thing here is really to look at it um, from a multi-time period perspective. Uh, you know, what are, uh, what's, what is a scenario? What are some interesting scenarios? What would be the impact of each of those scenarios in terms of our management? Uh, and then as these scenarios evolve, how would we continue to respond? You know, for example, if you know, equities drop by 10% over the next week, what would we do? You know, would we buy more? Would we buy less? What if they drop by 15%? What if they drop by 5%? Um, and, um, and, uh, and so on. So really the cycle you know, is uh, we start with uh, qualitative um, scenarios uh, from thought leaders again. Um, uh, and uh, this is internal thought leaders. Each of you is a thought leader, right? Um, uh, and, uh, and then we put it into a financial and economic context, right? Um, if, the, uh, Euro if European equities uh, fall by 10% because of, you know, uh, a situation more specific to Europe versus being in a much broader global market sell-off, you know, how is that different? Um, uh, and, uh, and then we do these macro and micro simulations, micro sim simulations in terms of how we respond and macro simulations in terms of how those paths uh, would likely do move forward, like the France situation that we described. You know, is that a, an idiosyncratic France scenario? Or, you know, what are some other paths where that could become a systematic, um, you know, uh, broader um, uh, scenario with the European core spreading um, globally? Okay. Uh, and then, very importantly, once we have uh, those scenario paths, we want to then monitor the leading indicators. What are some leading indicators to the, you know, France going from a black swan idiosyncratic one-time event to this is now potentially a dragon, dragon king uh, with uh, systemic impacts. Um, so what are the leading indicators for each of those scenarios and what are some triggers that we put in place to say, okay, you know, now uh, there's something that we, we ought to discuss, now there's something that we ought to do. Okay, so stress testing should be in, in, implemented with that. Okay, and, um, and clearly we need to adapt scenario severity, right, uh, to the changing market conditions uh, that we have. So, you know, uh, at some point in time, a daily 5% drop in the S&P 500 might be an appropriate one-day scenario. In other scenarios, a 10% drop in a day uh, might be a more appropriate kind of, uh, kind of scenario. So the same magnitude of stress tests doesn't always make sense, okay? In terms of database tags, um, we recommend, um, you know, using, uh, 
you know, a number of standard tags that you need to have and having your system be open so that you can put optional tags in there. So the standard tags would be, okay, you know, what's the time horizon? So a one day, one week scenario, one month scenario, quarterly scenario, an annual scenario, right? Uh, you know, what's the type of uh, scenario broadly? You know, is it a, you know, a macroeconomic shock? Is it um, a liquidity shock and so on? Um, uh, and then more broadly, you could talk about certain kinds of themes Right? You could tag something as, you know, the, 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 the China, you know, uh, investment bubble theme uh, and those repercussions, um, you know, an agflation type of theme and how that would um, uh, play out through various markets. Um, and then what would be some of the driving factors, right? Um, so agflation right now is obviously an interesting one with, uh, with, with the drought all over the United States and, and, and other countries. Okay, then um, some optional tags would be, you know, what, what kind of momentum are we seeing in that? Is that, uh, is that uh, are we seeing um, increasing momentum, stable, is it uh, decreasing? Um, what's the probability of the scenario? Is it a high, medium, low probability? And what's the severity of the scenario? High, medium, low severity to our portfolio. And also, where in that cycle are we? You know, is this a scenario that, you know, uh, Nouriel Rubini dreamed up that could materialize in six months or two years, we don't know, or never? Or is that a scenario that's already been adopted by the you know, early, in, early adopters and the early majority, and we're like now in, in, in the final stages um, of that? So where in the cycle uh, are we here? 